So, you're back again, my dear friends. Well, I've got something quite different for you this evening. Quite often people ask me, you know, what's the strangest thing that's ever happened to you? Have you seen a ghost? Do you believe in the supernatural? Have you ever experienced UFOs? And so on and so on. And I always think, well, damn, I've, <laughs> I've lived a really boring life. I haven't done any of those things. I haven't seen anything that weird. Then, um, recently occurred to me, actually, you know what? Something kind of weird has happened. Well, several things kind of weird have happened to me. And that's the inspiration for tonight's video. So, um, this isn't going to be a finely polished narration of a horror story. Sorry about that. There's going to be lots of umming and ahhing. It's going to more be, well, I'm going to be freestyling. I'm just going to be rolling with the ball and see uh, where we go. But everything I talk to you about tonight has actually happened to me. And it just so happens that I have encountered three of England's most notorious serial killers in the flesh. So, today's video is my recollections of those events. Interested? <laughs> I thought you might be. Okay, prepare for a bit of rambling, but I'll get to the point eventually. All right, are you ready? Okay. Let's start with uh, number one. So I know, I know, you're already thinking, how has our mild-mannered narrator managed to make contact with three serial killers in his lifetime? Surely that's just way too many. One would be enough, two would be more than a coincidence. How can he manage to have um, been in the same room almost as three of them? Well, here's my story. First up, we're going back to... All right, well, I can't remember exactly the point in time, but I was a wee little laddie. Um, I moved around quite a lot during my life, not just throughout England, but in other countries as well. So, um, But all of these are related to things that have happened in England. So um, taking you back to maybe... 1979. I was a wee little laddie, like I said, maybe 1980. And I was living up in the north of England, and um, in the winter, nights draw in pretty early. About half past four, five o'clock, it's pitch black. So, um, this is all based on my recollection, but um, one winter's evening, me and my mum going out, we're going to the shop, just to get a pint of milk or something, I don't know, something innocent like that. And in the little town that we lived in, Small town, population less than 15,000. Uh, there's um, a footbridge going across the railway lines. And on the other, we live on the um, little small road side of the thing, the bridge. On the other side is uh, a big main road that leads to a supermarket. So we, my mum's like, oh, come on, let's go out. We need some milk, something like that. I can't remember. A loaf of bread. I was like, oh, come on, do I have to? So anyway, we're on our way out there. We get to um, the bottom of the footbridge. I'm like, oh, can, can, you know, do we have to go across there? I don't like it. It's cold. It's dark. I'm scared. And while we were at the bottom, we heard um, some kind of muffled sound and then like a scream. But we couldn't really quite be sure. And um, I looked at my mum. She looked back at me. And we're thinking, oh, that doesn't sound right. All of a sudden, uh, there was a sound of um, footsteps coming down the 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 stairway, do, 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 do. somebody coming at quite a speed. And all of a sudden, this um, man pushes past us. We were so, I think my mum said something like, oh, you know, what's going on? What's happened? Is everything all right? Uh, didn't say a word and ran off pretty quickly. Now, it could be my mind playing tricks on me, but I seem to recall, you know, he was a dark haired man, had a beard, quite shifty looking, obviously. And anyway, we... um. We sort of investigated, and um, following, uh, some time later, it didn't feel like very long, a few seconds, another guy came down and said, Who was that? Did you see who it was? Did you see wh where they went? And we was like, well, no, sorry, we were just a bit startled by everything. And he's like, can you get an ambulance? Can you call the police? Call someone. There's been an incident up there. Um, there's a woman who's injured. So um, off we went. Uh, there was another shop open just across the street. So we went and said, look, there's been some, there's something happened on the footbridge. Can you call the police and the ambulance? And he did. They, um, they did, and they came. And um, the woman was injured. She'd been hit on the head by some large, blunt object. But, you know, she was in hospital for a couple of days, and she came out, and it was okay. And um, we didn't really think that much of it. I mean, there was somebody in the area, in the, sort of the wider area at that time, quite a notorious serial killer. But 
we didn't think it could have been him, you know. It's, we were in a very conservative uh, town. Nothing like that would have happened there. And anyway, um, so no, um, the actions of this serial killer came out many years later. But he wasn't convicted of um, this act. You know, he wasn't found to have been in the area. He hadn't confessed to doing it. So we didn't think anything of it, really. We thought, well, okay, maybe it was just, you know, a mugger trying to get this woman's hand back. And then um, years and years later, you know, I was in my teenage years, late teens, and um, I was fortunate enough to move in several, uh, you know, I had quite a lot of social activities going on. I moved in many different social circles. So I had quite a lot of friends who were considerably older than me, 20, 30 years older than me in some cases. And uh, we were in the pub one evening and um, the conversation came up about um, the Yorkshire Ripper, Peter Sutcliffe one of the most notorious killers of women in the history of the United Kingdom. And um, we got talking about the case from uh, all those years ago. And he said, um, yeah, yeah, that was me. I was the guy who found um, the woman on the footbridge. And um, I was the one, I, I went down, I went running after him, trying to find him. I found this uh, woman and her child. And um, I asked him if they'd seen anything they hadn't. And I looked at him and I said, that was you, wasn't it? You were that man who came down looking for him. And he looked at me and he said, you were that little kid, weren't you? And I'd known him for years at this point, but we both had this sudden moment of um, shock realization. We were the ones there. We'd seen him. We'd seen Peter Sutcliffe, the serial killer. He'd probably saved this woman's life by chasing after him and shouting. Yeah, so, um, yeah, pretty intense. Of course, um, he never confessed to it. He never admitted to doing it. So it might just have been someone else. And we're just like putting two and two together. Shifty looking man with a beard. It could have been someone completely different, but his modus operandi was the same. Um, hitting a woman on the back of the head with a blunt hammer. And uh, just so happens he didn't get this one. And we think um, our presence may have played a part in that, saving that woman's life. But yeah, notorious serial killer, killed 13 women, pushed past me and my mum, ran off into the night. Whew. Okay, <laughs> give me a minute folks, alright? And there's an interesting prelude to this story. So um, a few years later, uh, we moved to the south of England. And uh, we were living only a couple of miles away from a place called Broadmoor Hospital. Now, this is not technically a hospital. It's um, kind of an insane asylum for um, serial killers. And um, this guy, Peter Sutcliffe, was there. And um, one day in the mid-80s, we heard that someone had escaped. Nobody knew who it was, but just for a short time, we thought it was him. We thought the Yorkshire Ripper had escaped. And uh, the individual in question was eventually apprehended only a couple of hundred meters away from where we were living. <laughs> so we were thinking, oh my God, he's out and he's come to finish us off. He knows where we live. <laughs> but it wasn't him. But anyway, just a interesting little afterthought there. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, um, yeah, my first encounter with a serial killer. Ooh, you'd think that would be enough for one lifetime, wouldn't you? Well, no, unfortunately not. So, let's think about number two. So, yeah, we're fast-forwarding to the, um, the mid to late 1980s here, and we're um, living in the south of England. And, uh, well, you know, you've always got those relatives that nobody in the family really likes. <laughs> but, you know, for whatever reason, you still have to go visit them from time to time. Well, we had some of those. And um, they lived in Gloucester, which is... Um, a nondescript but fairly nice city in England. You know, every so often, every few... Well, it felt like too often to me, but probably once every six months, we'd um, we'd go over and visit them. We'd stay for the day. Um, I'd sit there really bored. They'd make me a cup of tea. I'd drink it and then wait and watch the clock tick by. And at some point, I'd get a pound or two, go down to the local corner shop and, you know, get whatever I wanted as a reward. Now... It just so happens that these relatives um, lived a couple of streets uh, down from a place called Cromwell Street. And um, 
a local corner shop was, I don't know, just really strange that um, it felt like every time I went in there, the same few people would be there. Even, you know, months and months would be passing between the visits, but it would always be the same people. And there's this one guy who was in there. Had a huge grin on his face every time I went in. Very, very odd. You know, it's one of those grins where you think, you're gr- yeah, there's something not right about this, mister. I don't like the way you're grinning. It's kind of hiding something behind that's not very nice. Anyway, you know, just some guy in the corner shop grinning at you. What are you going to think about that? But anyway, going forward into the 1990s, um, got the TV on at home. All of a sudden, this uh, picture appears on the screen of this man. Um, Same strange expression on his face. And I said, Mom, hang on. Look at that. I know him. That's that strange bloke who was in that corner shop in Gloucester. She's like, what on earth are you talking about? I said, well, you know, you always give me a bit of money and send me off around the corner. I swear I saw this guy several times over the course of all those years that we went visiting Auntie What's-Her-Face. She's like, what are you talking about? I said, that's him. That's him. She said, no, no, it can't be him. That's Fred West. They've just found out that he's killed, you know, however many people over the course of the last 20 years. It can't be him. I said, well... Where's he from? She said, oh, Gloucester. I said, well, isn't that a bit strange? I'm sure it's him. He said, and then, of course, we found out that um, him and his wife had lived in Cromwell Street, just a couple of streets across from where um, my relative lived. And um, in all probability, it was him that I'd seen in that corner shop all those times. Hmm. Bear with me for a second. Even as a, even as a kid, um, you can look into someone's eyes, whatever expression they've got on their face, and you can recognize pure evil. Strange. Nobody else seemed to be bothered at all. Nobody else noticed it. And this was something that came across at the time when they were investigating in his case. Yeah, nobody had a clue. Didn't seem the type, you know. Seemed okay. Nice gentleman about town. With however many bodies buried in his backyard. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, two down. Is it just me, do you think? Do I attract these people? Well, (laughs) one more to go. At least only one more that I know of, anyway. All right, deep breath. Come on, Doc, you can do this. Okay, on to number three. Yeah, so this one is perhaps um, the least close I've gotten to my <laughs> many, many serial killering encounters, encounterers. But um, at the same time, he's perhaps um, the biggest killer of the lot. So um, we're going on now towards the end of the 1990s. Um, I'm at university, uh, north of England. One weekend, I go and stay with a friend. Um, He lived, uh, his parents lived in Hyde, uh, Greater Manchester. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't too far away from there. We just thought, uh, you know, for a change, we'll go to, we'll go back to his place for the weekend. Um, His parents were there anyway. So um, we kind of kept ourselves to ourselves. We said, well, you know, we'll go out, go to the clubs, go out drinking, have a couple of beers, you know, have a nice time. It'll all be good. Anyway, um, I think it was a Saturday afternoon. And his mum roped us in to go shopping. So we're like, okay, all right, we'll go. And anyway, we're out and about, you know, doing a bit of shopping. All a bit embarrassing, you know, we're young men. Um, Out with his mum. So (laughs) anyway, so we're, you know, we're walking around town. And um, this um, strange looking bearded fellow walks past us. And uh, his mum's like, oh, hello, doctor. How are you doing? You know, perfectly pleasant little chat. Nice enough. She's, oh, yeah, that's a local doctor. He's, um bit of a cult figure around here, you know, well known in the community, really sort of upstanding fellow and all that. And, uh, okay, nothing, thought nothing of it, went on about our way. And, um, anyway, so, um, you know, we stayed close, me and this guy, we were friends throughout university and about a year after that, um, he's like, oh, remember that guy we met when we were in town with my mum that time? I was like, no, of course not. (laughs) 
<laughs> he said, well, um, yeah, it turns out he was Harold Shipman, the local uh, doctor. And he was uh, one of the biggest serial killers in history. Killed somewhere between 200 and 300 of his patients during um, decades of uh, murder sprees as a doctor. <sighs> so, yeah, not as exciting as the other ones, but still, I have come into personal contact with three of Britain's most notorious serial killers. Now tell me, if you can beat that number, well done because I've had my lot of them. I don't want to see any more. don't want to have anything more to do with any of these psychos in any way, shape, or form. But anyway, a bit of um, a true story fest for you this evening. Hope you don't mind this change of pace. Uh, I'll be back with um, good old horror stories very soon. So, let me know what you think. Have you ever had any encounters like this? If you had, what happened? Um, I'd be interested to know, and I'm sure everyone else reading the comments would be as well. Right, well, a bit of an intense one this evening. Feels nice to get it off my chest and tell people. I mean, I haven't done anything wrong, but still. you got these things going around in your head, and you're thinking, well, when you've met three of the buggers, um, do you just attract this kind of person? Is this why I ended up being a horror narrator? Then I'm thinking, well, no, I'm just reading too much into it. Shut up, Doc. <laughs> You're just being silly. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Um, I'll be back soon. Okay? Bye-bye.